Dear everyone, today I greet you with many, many greetings. Greeting of uh, Islam, Salam Alaikum. Greeting of good morning, good afternoon, good evening, it depends where are you locating. Greeting with the new day, with the Muslims enjoying it, which is the day of Arafah today. When all the people doing Hajj, standing on the Mount of Arafah, asking Allah to forgive them, make Hajj, and they are. All these greetings for you are my wishes, that Allah give you the best and most prosperous life in this life and in the life to come. Uh, today is a very special day for the Muslims, and we should be praying and, and sharing the joy and the celebration of such a great day, one of the greatest days in the Islamic calendar. The day when Muslims stand on the Mount Arafah, and the Muslims who are not making Hajj and making fasting, so Allah could forgive one year past and one year to come. Anyway, my apology of not being with you for the last few months, since I was traveling heavily in different parts of the world, plus my assistant was sitting her final exam in engineering, and now, alhamdulillah, she is back. Today, in this new episode, we are going to talk about a يعني, not heavy discussion, but lighter discussion, talk about definitions of things, as well as questions. So what I want from you, if you have any definition in the social sector, in the civil side sector, in the humanitarian sector, just please forward it to me. If you have any question to raise, please forward it to me as well. And the uh, first episode today is talking about the pillars of pioneering and the pillars of wisdom. What do, I, what do I mean by that? Pillars of pioneering are five. Pillars of pioneering are five. Solid, solid, solid. Number one, your belief. How solid your belief is, whether you are a male or female, whether you are Muslim or a Muslim. The belief in your mission, in your message, in your objectives. The second, do you have the knowledge or not? And knowledge is beyond learning. Education is different to knowledge. Knowledge is very comprehensive field, wider field than having a certificate of PhD or master or undergraduate certificate. So knowledge, community knowledge, political knowledge, social knowledge, economic knowledge, besides the degree that you are having. Trying, meeting the challenges. Keep trying. Do not stop trying. If you can't, if you want to become a pioneer, you cannot stop trying. Trying once, ten times, hundred times, thousand times, more than thousand times. Keep trying. Tell you achieve what you want to achieve. Don't stop. And don't let anyone to let you stop or anyone to bring you down. Number five, number four, experience. What experience you have? What experience I have? What experience she has? We have to have experience. So experience, knowledge, trying, and belief are very solid fundamentals. Very solid fundamentals of pioneering. And the last and not the least, patience. We have to be patient if we want to become pioneer. We have to be patient if we want to become pioneer. If we are not patient, we'll never ever be able to go to this category of pioneering and the innovation. Never. If I say the five pillars of pioneering, belief in what you do, knowledge, which is more comprehensive than education, trying consistently all the time, having the re relevant experience, and last is to be patient. 
This is the first title of the talk today, first part of the title today. The second part, the pillars of wisdom, with 25 pillars of wisdom. Wisdom is something which is very, very, very comprehensively created. Some of us will be gifted by Allah to become wise men, like the prophets and the messenger of Allah and the special people that Allah SWT has chosen them for a special mission. But you people like you and me have to follow these 25 points and go through it and see how he or she can apply this to himself for herself to establish the pillars of wisdom. The first one is traveling. The more you travel, the more we learn. The more we have experience, the more we have knowledge. Then learning. Learning from people less than yourself, equivalent to, it, to you, and higher than you. Listening to people whom their ideology might be contradicting your ideology. As I mentioned before, trying. Keep consistently trying. Because trying and the number of trials will give you the direction of wisdom. When you act, have a slow reaction. Think before you act. When somebody slam you, or somebody curse you, or somebody insult you, just cool down. Think before you act emotionally. Patience, I mentioned it in the five pillars of pioneering as well. Belief, I mentioned it as well in the five pillars of pioneering as well. Noticing, what do I mean by noticing? You go around to different areas, to different societies, to different communities, to different countries. You keep noticing what's wrong, what is actually different to your society, to your community, and to your country, and your nation. And start writing it. Not writing these, these points that you notice. Keep writing them. Noticing what's going around you, the culture of people, the behavior of people, the reaction of people, the habits of people, all this will add layers to the layers of your wisdom. Observation, you have to be observant. Whenever you go to an area, don't just go there for tourism or for relaxing or for having a nice time. No, 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 no. Be observant. Compre co comprehending what you hear, what you see, what you understand. Which we call it observation. Noticing and observation are extremely important for any one of us. Complementation, you have to be complementing what you have with others, because they are not alone. Many people have gone through this path before and during and after. You are not the only one. You are not the only wise one. Many thousands of wise men and women have done what you are trying to do nowadays. So, complementation, you have to look at how those people were observant, were noticing, were contemplating, were extrapolating, and producing what's needed for the society. Altruism in your manner, as a lady, a woman, or a man, go down to show your humility. No wisdom without altruism. Nothing. You cannot. And the, a part of the, uh, of the founding manner of prophethood. Altruism is a cornerstone of wisdom. That's why to talk about it, you have to do it as well. And you have to show that your colleagues, whether they are your superior or the people under you, your quality, your humility. Filing, <coughs> filing and reporting. Never ever, never ever in your life 
stop filing what you see. Write file report. Or write report and put in a file. Even if you don't use the file, even if you don't use the report, but people after you will come and use them. So what you need to do is to keep collecting the data, to keep filing the data, to keep reporting what you have been seeing while you are in this area or in this area. Number 13, you have to increase the capacity of your institutional memory. Each one of us has male or female institutional memory. So we have to increase its capacity. We have to learn from others how can we increase the capacity of our institutional memory. And this is a big challenge to every one of us <laughs> because quite often we forgot what we have been doing. An institutional memory either could be done through coming back to your thinking ability or through the filing, writing, reporting, and classifying. Either or. Acknowledgement. We have to acknowledge the work of others, the work of people who have been before us, the work of people who are actually uh, uh, at the same era of time that we are living, and the work of people will be coming later on. What will be what will be leaving for them? We have to acknowledge the work of others, whether we like the others or we don't like the others. Whether we like the others or we don't like the others. Recognition. Respect. Respect should be cross-cutting. Don't ever make mockery <coughs> on people who don't have your own belief, people who has different belief, people who have different culture, people who have different habits, people who have different food style or fashion. Don't. You have to respect everybody. And this is one of the signs of wisdom as well. And the wisdom is to respect, to recognize as well. We cannot actually recognize the work of others unless we respect them, unless we acknowledge what they have been doing, whether they are from the same religious background or different background. Passing the knowledge to whom? To generations to come. Don't die having all this knowledge with you to be buried with you in the grave. Try to pass it over to any community, to any generation, to any age, to any sex, to men, to women, to young children, to youth, to anybody. Don't let the knowledge to be buried with you when we are buried in our graveyard. I have to keep passing it, passing it, passing it, even if there is no one can listen to you. Your duty is to pass the knowledge. The acceptance is in the hands of Allah. But one day, a generation will come to recognize the value of the knowledge that you left Maybe 50 years after you die, maybe 100 years, maybe 1,000 years. Passing knowledge. Diversity of thoughts. Don't stick yourself to one kind of thought. Thoughts and the ideology are diverse. Plenty. Plenty. And this is the ability and the wisdom of Allah of creating us as human beings differently. Ya Yohannas. إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل تعرفوا إنا أكرمكم عند ذكر all mankind all mankind we have created you from male and female 
and Lumedio tribes and nations to know one another. The best amongst you is the most biased of you. So what you need to do in this, this diversity of thought, when even we go to our country, talk about USA, if you talk about Europe, if you talk about Germany, if you talk about UK, if you talk about Holland, you will find there's multi-dimensional thoughts in different locality in the same country. It's not one, it's not one size can fit all. No, nothing called one size fits all. Nothing. A diversity of thoughts. Realizing. You have to realize what's around you. And you have to relate yourself to the surrounding. You are a part of the surrounding. Because the social change at any society is going by the second. And the minute, whether horizontal or vertical or diagonal or cross-cutting or, or, or circumference, circumferential. So realizing the reality around us. Good listening. A wise man and a wise woman has to be very good in listening. Don't jump into conclusion. Don't jump into conclusion. Don't hurry up. You have plenty of time to think, to reflect, then to produce your opinion or your, or your response. Why should you rush? Which actually Good listener, be good listeners. Benefiting from other experience. Whenever you go to a society, you have this eye and ear and mind to learn and benefit from the experience. You tell yourself, definitely, this society or this country or this nation or this community is different to me. What should I learn from them? You go with the intention of learning, of learning and benefiting from their experience, even experience which might contradict your values. Recognizing the needs, needs of whom? Needs of the local community that you claim that you want to serve global community that you are trying to serve, your own community that you want to stand for, your project, your program, which I call it recognizing the needs. There's needs everywhere. The world is full of needs. They do not have shortage of needs. Every day, the needs list are abundant. Understanding the diverse societal culture. We have to understand the diverse societal culture in any country, then in any district, then in any city, then in any village, there is diverse societal and community cultures. Not one culture for one village, not one culture for one township, not one culture for one city, not one culture for one district or one country. Diverse societal culture. You have to be forward thinking what we need to do next. Fine. We are suffering from droughts. We are suffering from hunger. We are suffering from, con from conflict, armed conflicts, and the displacement or refugees. So what's next? Keep thinking. Don't try to analyze the problem, but put the solution. What said forward thinking. So with the 25 points of pillars of wisdom, I'll say them again. Traveling, learning, trying, slow reaction, patience, belief, noticing, observation, complementation, uh, Companionship, see how are your companions. Altruism, filing and reporting, 
an institutional memory, acknowledgement, respect, recognition, passing knowledge to, gener to generation to come, for generation to come, realizing the reality surrounding you, be good listeners and good listening, benefiting from the experience of others, recognizing the needs of the community, understanding the diverse societal culture, and the last and not least, be forward thinkers. This is the 25 points of the pillars of wisdom. Now let us move to the third part of our discussion today, which is the three questions came to be from Dr. Hassan Junaidi in uh, Ghazi Antab in uh, Turkey. The first one is the humanitarian structure in its current organization created to be sustainable? I said no. Because all the humanitarian structure are created on the basis of emergency response, humanitarian response, because of the number of conflicts happening in different parts of the world, particularly over the last 20 or 30 years, from time of Afghanistan in the 70s, El Bosnia, Kosovo, Chechnya, and uh, nowadays we talk about Syria, we talk about Yemen, we talk about Iraq, we talk about Lebanon, we talk about Sudan, we talk about Eritrea, we talk about DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo, we talk about Somalia. Talk about Afghanistan again. You find that all our thinking is driven by humanitarian response. So we are investing in whom? We are investing in fundraising, media, connection, and networking. This is what we are doing nowadays. But we need to talk about different things as well, like research, studies, like development, like capacity building, like rehabilitation programs, like creating our new philosophy of thinking, our new culture, like writing our history with our organization. Like what's our identity? We have to speak about how can we make our identity. Those eight or nine points are not on the agenda of the organization, which is, whether they are small or large organization. Because all of us are very busy with firefighting and fundraising for different. Even when I'm saying that, people, sometimes the Muslims, ignored the Ukraine crisis. Unfortunately, despite the fact that <laughs> the number of internet displaced people in Ukraine and refugees are in millions. <coughs> we shouldn't do that. The least we can highlight the plight of the needy people, even if we don't have money to support them. Because the history would be judgmental on us being in Europe, talk about it. One of the largest humanitarian catastrophe in Europe, and we said, and do nothing. This is the response to the first questions. The second question from Dr. Hassan Jinedi How can we implement the real localization strategy that are far from philosophical rhetorics? Quite often, we find people talk about rhetorics, hot air discussions. Yes, we are. And use sometimes the young people as images and the young women as images and saying, we have them in the organization. Having them doing what? Decision makers on the high level, head of department, head of division, head of units, or just images. Stop using the young people and women as rhetoric. Philosophical discussion. And this is something we need to stop doing it. I know some organizations 
when they go to conservative organization, Muslim organization, they show women wearing hijab. When they go to non-Muslim organization, they show women not wearing hijab. This is hypocrisy. This is hypocrisy, and this is hypocrisy. To be very honest, this is not a manner of humanitarian worker, or this is not a humanitarian manner at all. That's why this kind of rhetoric and philosophical discussion, we shouldn't want to discuss it. We have to be realizing about how to build the organization from inside, then how to build the community from outside. This is our mission. So we shouldn't philosophize our discussion and make it rhetoric discussion. Number third, the third question is how can we change the performance of our local organization from being service providers to others? As I mentioned earlier on, most of our organization are service providers. The smaller organization was starting four, five, seven, eight, ten years ago. And even the larger organization in the Muslim countries and Muslim world started about 30 or 40 years ago. Traditionally, I can name the number of projects that most of these organizations are doing. Orphan sponsorship, weather sponsorship, school bag, Ramadan. Uh, Eid al-Fut, uh, Zakat al-Fut, uh, Zakat project, uh, Kurbani, uh, what else? Uh, clothes, school clothes, uh, humanitarian response, and others. I know them. Get out of this ghetto. Please get out of this ghetto. You can provide different services, intellectual services based <coughs> on trying to create a different direction for the sector. You understood this? Creating a different direction for the sector. Don't be all together led by others. Enough is enough. You have to be leaders by your own. You have to be followed, not to be following. And this is the message for the young people. Maybe the, the, the last generation were followers. My generation at this age should not become followers. They should try to become leaders by producing the quality performance that let others come follow them, producing reports, producing coalitions, building partnership, training young people, empowering women, writing your own philosophy of thinking, writing your own culture, showing your own identity, and showing others your history. If your organization is 30, 40, or 50 years old, you have to be celebrating the 50 years of achievement. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. He said, we started in the 50s, or we started in the 70s, or we started in the 80s, and these are our achievements, milestones. Then you create, after putting the milestones, the roadmap, not only for your organization, but for your community, then for humanity. This is what makes us to come out from becoming traditional service providers into becoming leadership, having this leadership quality. Please, brothers and sisters, believe that you are a leader or you are leaders. Believe that you can lead. Believe that you have something that others don't have. Believe that you have experience no one else could have. Believe that your values, your culture, your identity, your history, all these are added value 
not only to the sector, but the whole humanity. We find the West are making stars. They are, this is their own right. But we, they shine their stars, while others, ours, we dim our stars. We hide our stars, and we fight our stars. This is the problem of inferiority complex. Why shouldn't recognize the achievement of our young people, male or female, in the community? Like actually, I was celebrating the achievement of young Christian woman who was working for Islamic Relief in Kenya when I was there for, for two, two years ago. When she said, I'm fasting, but I was traveling for hours and hours and hours, up to, <laughs> up to 18 hours, <coughs> to reach the most needy. I am celebrating Gloria. I am celebrating Natasha. I am celebrating others who contributed heavily, positively, to the organization and to humanity. This is we have to come out from becoming just service, traditional service provider to be creative providers. These two questions will be for next week, inshallah. The first one is by Dr. Muhammad Rayani, which is talking about what is the humanitarian media. The second one by somebody called Dr. Muhammad Tantawi from Egypt said, who are the right soldiers? Inshallah, next week, We'll talk about them, as well as we'll talk about other, actually, uh, questions, to answer other questions. So if you have more questions, please forward them to us. If you have more definitions, please forward them to us in Arabic or English. Eid Mubarak tomorrow. And today, if you are in the West, in America or Canada or Europe, still, you have one or two hours left to make dua, not only for yourself, but for the whole Ummah. The people who are in the East already, they have done and made their own da'a. Because, oh, because today is the day of Arafah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Eid Mubarak, insha'Allah.